Hey everybody, Sean Adams here with Disinfect Water. Today, when we talk about water quality reports or your consumer confidence reports, I'm going to talk about what, how to read it, what, like the details in it. We went over the anatomy of it yesterday, but now we want to go into details. All of the reports will have this area in here called terms used in this report. And this gives you an understanding of what each of the terms are, what an MCL is, which is the maximum contaminant level. Um, and the MCLG, which is the goal for the maximum contaminant level, public health goals, maximum residual disinfection level, et cetera. And this is actually basically all of the standards that exist out there in order to say, yes, your water is safe or not. And so we'll go through and we'll look at one of the charts in here just to give you an idea. <coughs> so there's a couple things that they'll usually measure. They'll usually measure for any kind of bacteria that might exist here. And this one is measuring for um, coliform, E. coli, et cetera, et cetera, and I'll come back to these in a second. Lead and copper can often be present in water, and so they'll talk about those as well, and I'll show you kind of how to, um, remember, we'll come back up to, we'll compare all these things, like AL, regulatory action level, et cetera, et cetera. Um, sodium and hardness, these are some other things that exist in water that sometimes, um, some of this will be different depending on your consumer confidence report, your water quality report. Uh, some of you may be talking about turbidity and color. Some of you might not have hardness. It all depends. There are a few in here that are standard. Um, you're probably going to always find um, trihalomethanes and haleoacidic acids. Um, you'll also notice sometimes they're going to be called, and I'll go look at this one, HAAS or HAA5s and TTHMs. Uh, that's just an abbreviation. So if you hear somebody talking about an HAA5 or a TTHM, um, those are those same measurements just spoken differently. So once it, so let's just kind of look at the standards first. So here are the, the, the information you need to know. Maximum contaminant level, highest level of contaminant that is allowed in drinking water. This is, you, um, for water to be safe, you can't have more than this contaminant in it. Uh, same thing for, and then there's the goal, which is where people want to get to be. Um, so you're safe if you're under this level and you want to get to this level. Public health goals, same thing. Uh, residual disinfectant levels. And residual disinfectant level is pretty simple to understand. There's a lot of things that are used to make your water safe, and unfortunately, some of them can cause residual, uh, like, they, they, they can still stay in the water, and so you want to kind of know about that. And then the maximum residual disinfectant level goal, what's that goal? Primary drinking water standards, these are the standards that people are being measured on. Um, secondary to water, treatment techniques, what, what are they using to treat the water, regulatory action level. Um, if there's a if this if it exceeds this, then they have to do something different. Um, the variance is an exception. Sometimes some states have different uh, rules than others. Uh, total assessments, et cetera, et cetera. So parts per million, parts per billion, parts per trillion, et cetera, et cetera. So let's just look at this really quick and look at like we'll look at a couple of the lines to help you understand. So in here, the the highest detection number um, number of detections was zero. So you can't have more than zero. There are none in the month. There was one maximum CLL, CL, so we'll go back up here and look, and that's the maximum contaminant level. So that's the highest level, and so it's saying the maximum level you could have is one positive monthly sample. They didn't have any, so therefore they were, and the goal is to have zero. So they hit their goal, and then they, a lot of times they'll tell you where it's coming from. This is naturally present in environment. Um, e. coli is produced by us and other animals doing what we do, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see that because they're at zeros, they didn't have any problems with those bacteria. Same thing with lead and copper. It'll tell you um, a lot of times your pipes can cause lead to be in your piping. There were a lot of lead pipes that were used a long time ago. Um, manufacturer rolls will sometimes uh, discharge lead, which is why it's important that a lot of industrial water treatment is happening appropriately. Uh, natural deposits can bring in lead. So lead doesn't always have to be man-made. It can often come just from the natural um, world. Same thing here for copper. And th so these are other things. And they took 10 samples, um, 90 percentile level detected at 5.8 and 2.4 versus the acceptable level of being 15. So they were well under the acceptable level in both of these areas. And that's what you want to have. Uh, sodium and hardness, once again, same kind of measurements. They don't necessarily have goals for those. It's just letting you know this exists. Um, and for them, salt pro present in water that is generally naturally occurring. Um, the ones I want to talk about here are the TTHMs and haleocytic acids, because this is where you want to, these are the ones that can be uh, specifically dangerous to folks, and I'm going to explain. Um, it, you'll notice over here it says that it's a byproduct of drinking water disinfection. There's lots of products that can be used in the world of disinfection. There's chlorination, prechlorination, potassium permanganate, um, ozone, lots of things can be used. And some of these things can lead to um, 
byproducts of drinking water like can lead to these other things. So TTHMs and haleocytic acids don't necessarily exist in nature. They occur because of us doing all the other work to clean all these other things out of your water. And I'm just going to kind of use this little example that I drew up here. Um, up here is what happens when you add, when you pre-chlorinate water. So this, let's say this is a cell of something, that uh, an organic. When chlorine comes in, what it does is breaks the cell but unfortunately, all the stuff that's living inside the cell can then get released. And that released stuff is what trib contributes to TTHMs, haleocytic acids. Our product, DW Liquid ROS, when you go in here, we actually go in and attack the inside of the cell so that there's nothing alive in it. So if chlorine, because most plants, pretty much every plant does a, a, a post-chlorine treatment, a treatment right before it goes into the pipes to help the water stay clean through the piping to get from plant to your house. And it's, it's perfectly safe. It's actually very valuable. But it also um, can contribute to TTHMs and haleocytic acids. Where with ours, even if they break the seal, there's nothing that's going to come out. So we're not going to be having those secondary problems. Just wanted to give you an example of the things to keep in mind when doing this. Now in here, we'll look at the, to like the TTHM score here. And that's an 80. That's the maximum level. Um, and then the maximum goal, that, there isn't one for this location. But the maximum, and once again, maximum contaminant level, just so we understand how that the information's in your document, um, is 80. And so their level detection, and this is the average level of detection, was 64. So they weren't in violation because they weren't above 80. But there was a point in here, in the range of detections, you can see that at some point, they actually did exceed 80. Now, that doesn't mean that they were in violation overall, but it does mean that there was a point where those TTHMs were higher than we would like them to be. Now, and, that, and there's lots of things that can contribute to that. If there are a groundwater sample uh, or groundwater source, in summer you can get a lot more al algae and things growing inside, let's say, a lake or a river, and that can create more um, organics in the water treatment and so then therefore they have to do use more to treat it to break up the organics so sometimes the range will go higher uh, from my perspective these are the people I would love to talk with and have conversations with here at disinfect water because we can help reduce the number like even on those high quantity day times like summer or even in winter when you're not using as much water it can sit in the pipes or it can sit in the system longer and stuff can grow and therefore, these numbers can go higher. That's oftentimes when these range detections get higher. Anything up in that range detection it just means they're going to have to be using a lot more chemicals to treat. And I'd rather than not having to be worrying about that, I'd love for these range of detections to always be under 80. Um, the level detected is the average, and that's great. It means it's safe. But I want the range to be under the, the maximum contaminant load. I mean, even in the haleocytic acids, they're halfway there. So it's they're safe. Please don't get me wrong. If this is your water, this is your CCR, your water is safe. I'm just saying that disinfect water and DW Liquid RS can make it safer. So this is what I want you guys to see how to read some of this stuff just so you understand. Um, and it just, like, this, these folks are near seawater, so they have some chlorine, chloride and sulfate that comes in, et cetera, et cetera. And this is just another example. Like, we can go through and look at this one. This is chlorine. Um, the maximum recommended daily limit is um, four points per billion. They took, um, they had no samples, number of samples below the level, um, sample size 41. So they had, the percentage of samples meeting that the requirements was 100%. Totally safe um, in that area. And here's their HAA5s and TTHMs. These folks, they're, I mean, you can see their range is well below the, mag the MCL of 60 and 80. Even here, they went one of, barely above, but they still went above, and their average is a little higher. This average was 60 in TTHMs, where this average was 64 and 66 uh, and 60. So both of these folks, they're just getting a little higher than I would like to see, and so these are the folks I love to have conversations with to see if we can get those HAA5s and TTHM numbers down. This is how you can read it, but what you want to know is actually just look at the average and you want to make sure that they are always in compliance or look for an MCL violation. And you'll see this one has a bunch of no's because they were their water is safe for everyone to drink. Um, and then they even can have this like list here where anything else that's not regulated, they would list it for you just so you can see those information. So this is how you go about reading it. So use the, the code up here. And in this one, they use it as terms and abbreviations used in this report, where in this other CCR, um, they call it the same thing, it just looks different. doesn't matter, just look for that section and that will help you then read the, the, 
the actual t these tables that give you the numbers. Look for level of detection and then look to see if there's any place where they say that they may have been in violation. Odds are they're not. Most water treatment plants are excellent. Uh, they do a really good job unless there's an issue that pops up. And that's one of the things I'll talk about tomorrow is what a boil order is and why those might come in. Uh, so hopefully this helps you read your CCR and be a little bit more educated about the water they're getting so that you know that your water is safe to drink. And it lets you be able to be an educated consumer so you can actually have conversations with folks who manage your water to ask them, hey, why are these numbers higher? What happened on this day when it was when you tested 88.7, that was above the, the MCL of 80, what was going on at that time? And they might tell you, algae, um, extra, like we shut down for a little while and so there was extra water in the pipe, whatever it might be. But it's good to be able to have those intelligent, educated conversations. So hopefully this helps you read a CCR or water quality report. I'm Sean Adams with Disinfect Water and hopefully happy to help educate the consumers on how to make sure their water is safe for them. Cheers.